Church of the Lakes. You guys look fantastic this morning. Why don't you stand and worship with us this morning? Come on, 
take a moment just to uh, thank you for the reality of what we just sang, the words we just sang. Every knee will bow. Every, every knee's going to bow, but we choose to bow today. We choose to bow our hearts, our lives. We surrender all to you today, knowing that you're the author and finisher of our faith. So we thank you, God. We thank you for making your presence very real here in this place. And as we interact with you today, Holy Spirit, would you continue to guide, help us to hear what you have to say to us today, God. Give us courage to follow through on what you what you tell us and what you speak to our hearts today. I just don't want to hurry. I don't know about you guys, but I'm in a hurry when I'm not in a hurry. Do you know what I mean? And um, sometimes you just need to sit still and acknowledge God's presence, right? The scripture says, be still and know that I am God. So may it just calm your hearts for just a minute. Calm your souls. Forget about the schedule. Um, soak in the reality that the creator of the universe would like to talk with you today. That the creator of the universe wants to, to have a moment with you today, to interact with you today. Yeah. Marcus is in, you know, Kayla are going to be mouthpieces, and I'm going to be a mouthpiece to speak. But it's really the creator of the universe that wants to speak, wants to have a relationship with you today. And the only reason that we have the ability to have that relationship is because of the cross. Because Jesus came and died for our sins. And so we like to start the first of the month and kind of look at it like a, a tithe. It's the first of the month. And so we like to do communion. So we're we're going to have communion in just a few moments. And I just really want to take a moment to kind of soak in the reason Jesus told his disciples, do this in remembrance of me. Uh, and, and, I, and so I want to read just from the scripture for you. We're, we're going to put it up on the screen. I, I want to read a little bit of kind of the story. What is communion? What are we doing in this? So, so look at this in First Corinthians. It says this. For I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread, gave thanks to God for it, then he broke it in pieces and said, This is my body, 
which is given for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it, for every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. That's, that's, that's what we're doing. So in just a moment, you're going to come forward, and I'll tell you how to do that in a second. And grab elements. We have them here. There's a little wafer. There's a little cup. I want you to notice something. The, the bread and the, and, the, and, the, and the blood are separated. There's a reason for that. When you take blood out of any living thing, it now dies. It's dead. That, that bread represents the fact that Jesus, the, the Son of God, the only, the only begotten Son of God, left heaven, left perfection to come to this crazy place and die. When you take that bread, that's what it is. It's a remembrance that he died. And why did he die? Because he was thinking about you. When he said, it is finished on the cross, he was thinking about you. He was thinking about what you did last night. He was thinking about what you did last week. What you did, uh, what, the, all sins are covered in that. I mean, that's what it represents. And then when you take the cup, it's the new covenant. That you would have life. But even beyond that, that God loves us. God is so cool. I don't know about you guys, but I have a lot that I could be ashamed about or regret from my past. But I have the cup. And the cup says, regardless, I died for all of that. Regardless, now you can have life. And so as you receive communion today, I want you to have that in your mind. Amen? And you can give God honor, absolutely. We're so grateful for that reality. Look at this one more verse I want to give you real quick. Is not the cup of thanksgiving, that's the cup we're talking about, for which we give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ? And is not the bread that we break a participation in the body of Christ? That's what we're doing. It's not just a ceremony. It's a moment for you to remember Him, to give Him adoration. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do it a little bit differently today. Um, communion's up here. We're going to ask everybody to go out that way. So you're going to go out the aisles this way, come down, and then go back the other aisle to go back in. Just wait for the, the row in front of you to empty out and come down, um, and then you can come down. But what we're going to do is, listen, there's no formality. There's no format to this. As a matter of fact, when I get done in just a second, the band's going to go back into worship. We just want to include today in our worship this communion. So do communion in a way that's meaningful for you. That's not just ceremonial, but that is actually personal. If you need to go back and sit down for a minute and have a moment with God and say, God, I need to clear my head of, you know, I've got offenses in my heart and things and people that I need to forgive before I do this and I'm right with you. Or if you need to stand here up front for a few minutes and just worship or whatever that is. And if for some of you, that freedom is a little uncomfortable. <laughs> That's okay. All I know is I don't I don't want to just do church. We're, we're starting 21 days of prayer and fasting in church. i got to tell you, I have crazy expectations for what God's going to say and do. If you want crazy results, guess what? you got to do crazy things. So... Out of your comfort zone today, as the band goes back into worship and we sing this, this great song, they got a great new song they're singing, take a minute to realize what this represents for you, why Jesus would do this for you. Take a moment and thank Him for all the things that you have overcome. And remember who you used to be, and you may not be where you want to be, but come on somebody, you are not where you used to be, right? And so, man, let's push in. Push in, church. Push in a little bit to this communion time. Father God, would you bless this time? Holy Spirit, would you come and speak? Would you give us a realization of how we can honor you best in this practice that we're about to go through? Speak to our hearts. Show yourself very real in this time. We pray it in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. First rows, you guys can come on down in the church. Feel the freedom in communion today. Come on, worship. Feed us worship.
washing my eyes to see your majesty to be still and know that you're in this place. Please let me stand and rest in your holiness. The word of God speak. Would you pour down like rain? Washing my eyes to see your majesty to be still and know that you're in this place. Please let me stay rest in your holiness. Word of God speak. I'm finding myself at a loss for words. And the funny thing is, it's okay. The last thing I need is to be heard, but to hear what you would say. Can we say that together? The word of God, please, would you pour down my grace, washing my eyes to see your majesty to be still. One more time. He reigns in your life this morning. Hallelujah. Lift it up this morning. Hallelujah. Can we look, raise it up as one big choir one more time? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we give you the glory.
So God, we look to you this morning in every situation. You see battles throughout this whole auditorium. But God, we serve a victory God who sees the battle and he laughs at it because he knows the victory that we're about to go through. So God, give us ears to hear what you are saying to the church. That God, we may effectively, effectively minister to the people that you have called us to minister. So God, we love you, we thank you, and we pray that everybody said, Amen. So we're so excited that you're here this morning. We're about to go into a time of meet and greet. So find somebody you didn't come with, give them a high five, shake their hand, hug them. Good morning and welcome to Church of the Lakes Online. Thanks for joining us this morning and we hope that God speaks to you in a mighty way. To help you connect with Church of the Lakes, we've created on our website an e-guide. What you're going to do is go to cotlakes.com. In the right corner of the phone, there's three lines. One of those lines says e-guide. Thanks again for joining us this morning. Enjoy today's teaching and we know that God has something amazing for you to hear. All right. Already. Many of them are muted. Many of them are muted. And now, on today's program. Hello. Good morning. Welcome to Church of the Lakes Online. We're so glad that you joined us this morning. And again, like we always try to remind those uh, that tune in with us online, we do have an e-guide. And uh, this is kind of like when you come to church, we actually have an experience guide we give out that's got notes in it and all kinds of information. And really, that's what we prepared this for you. Um, the first time guests, events, small groups that are coming up soon, sermon notes, giving, all those kind of things. Uh, so if you're a first-time guest, we would love to know that. If you've got a prayer request, you can send it also through that. If you'd like to respond in some way to today's teaching, then there's a way for you to do that um, as well. So check that out, cotlakes.com, and then go to the e-guide, it's called, and uh, all the information is there for you. I, I mentioned giving. Uh, we're so grateful for uh, how giving our church is, and it allows us to do some great things like something called The Rock at Leesburg High School. Check this out. Hi everybody, this is Lori Humphrey. And for those of you who don't know me, I have the privilege of managing The Rock here at Leesburg High School. And this is our second year, um, thanks to your efforts and on many other community partners, uh, we've been able to continue this wonderful mission here right on campus, which is so unique because we're able to show Christ to kids during the school day and share with them um, the love that only he can give. And, you know, originally The Rock was set up to meet the basic needs. And we've done that through, um, as you can see behind me, our clothing closets, um, our food pantry, school supplies, hygiene, you know, all of those things. We've even, through gracious donations, we've been able to help kids play sports and do activities that they wouldn't have been able to do. 
Um, but more than that, the Rock has become a place of a home away from home for many of our students. As you know, um, we have many homeless kids at our school and the Rock has become their place of security and safety. And when they just need someone to be there to listen to them, um, we're able to do that. And I am just so grateful for that. And one thing that we've learned along the way, you know, we've had a thousand kids check into the Rock for various needs from everything from a face mask, you know, to um, food or for clothing, or maybe they needed an outfit to wear for an interview or a um, application, you know, for scholarships or whatever, and they had to do a Zoom call, but they wanted to make sure they were dressed appropriately. Uh, we were able to provide that need for them. And one thing that we have found is that The Rock has become a place where the kids, if they're having a bad day, if they're feeling anxious, um, if they just need to cool off, the teachers have been able to send them down here. They take a few minutes to gather their thoughts and um, get their minds straight again. And we're able to show Christ through us um, to these kids that may have never had that opportunity before. We have found that um, kids just want to come here now, <laughs> whether they need something or not. They just want to pop in because this is their place. And that's exactly what we always wanted it to be. And we know we couldn't have done that without you. And we're so grateful um, for not only your financial investment that you've made, but your caring and your prayer investment that you've made. Because we know that that is the most important thing. We did something that no one thought could be done, and that's put a faith-based program in the middle of a public school. And I am so proud and grateful that I have been a part of that. And we are excited now because we've been able to spread this mission. We were able to open the next rock, which was at Umatilla High School. And hopefully next year there'll be another one opening with um, some of the things that we've been able to do here and spread that joy because that's truly what it is. It's a joy. So I thank you. Um, anytime you want to come visit, feel free. This is an awesome place. We love um, what we've set up here. And like I said, the kids love it too. And I couldn't have done it without you. So thank you. And thank you for all that you do. I mean, isn't that amazing? Uh, some 1,200 students that have checked in this year, and I think it's actually, Lori told me it's more than that because they don't check every particular kid in for different re differing reasons. Um, so we're so excited about that. We're actually opening another rock, uh, but I don't want to get ahead of myself because I'm going to talk about that in just a moment. A couple more announcements. Uh, today we're starting 21 days of prayer and fasting. Get online on our website. And all the information is there uh, for 21 days of prayer and fasting that we have a guide. So we are going to be taking 21 days and we are praying and fasting and asking God to speak to us. And, and I'm going to talk even, even more about that as well. But, but get online and get the guide. And then also, I will be doing 5 a.m. prayer. Yes, you heard me correctly. 5 a.m. 1, 2, 3, 4, dark 35, 5 a.m., right? Um, so join us uh, on Facebook uh, Live. Uh, I'll be on at 5 a.m. to do morning prayer. I usually try to go 10 to 12 minutes, try to make it relatively short, give you an opportunity to consider something, and then spend a little time in prayer. And the way we've designed our book this year, our guide for you for 21 days, is actually going to be a place for you to respond or, or sort of journal or write some notes in that. So download that, print it. If you need a copy and you would like to call the office, we'd be happy to print one for you. But uh, participate with us. And we're really excited right in the middle of our 21 days of prayer and fasting on August 8th, which of course is next Sunday at 7 p.m. We are part of, of, of praying over all the schools in Lake Sumter County. So if you'd like to join us at a school, we'll be at Leesburg High School, but you can go to any school in our area and different churches are assigned to help be there to cover and pray over each one of those campuses. So that's next Sunday night. And then coming up in September, we've got small groups. So really want to encourage uh, for you to get plugged in. I know you might be watching from a distance on purpose, uh, whether it be uh, COVID related or other things in, in your life that are going right now that are struggles and you're worried about that. But let me encourage you, as soon as you can or it's feasible, uh, we need each other and we need to be in small groups. So check out small groups. That's also here on the e-guide if you want to check that out. Well, as we jump into 21 days of prayer and fasting, I want to open with uh, a scripture that actually God put on my heart for several months now 
getting ready for this time period, getting ready for 21 days of prayer and fasting. So specifically, uh, God just put this on my heart like several months ago. I told our prayer team, I've been reading it regularly, just kind of meditating on it, praying about it and thinking about, you know, what God is saying. So uh, there's there's a story, actually, it's in John 4, where Jesus himself walks into a synagogue. And when he walks into the synagogue, he walks up to read, which was kind of normal practice. The men would walk up and read. And so they hand him the scroll. And when they hand him the scroll, they hand him the scroll that's the book of Isaiah out of the Old Testament, which is a real prophetic book. In other words, it's talking of things in the future. And Jesus opens up the scroll and he begins to read out of Isaiah 61, 1 through 4. And it says this, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me. Because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. Jesus is kind of making this formal announcement of actually who he is. He's making this announcement that I'm the Christ. You know, the one that y'all have been waiting for hundreds of years uh, to come and to bring people out of bondage and, 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 to, and to bring freedom, that, that here I am. And he says, he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim freedom for the captives and to release from darkness, a uh, release from darkness for the prisoners to proclaim the years of the Lord's favor and the day of the vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn. Now he stops right there in John four and says, uh, today, this has been fulfilled in your presence. And, and there's mixed reactions to that. You know, some people think that's cool. Some people don't think that's cool at all, but I want to keep reading in Isaiah 61, because if Jesus proclaimed this, he was saying, look, this is who I am. What it keeps going here in verse three is it describes the results for you and I. It, it describes what happens in our lives because of Jesus, because of who he was, because he came to preach the good news, to die for our sins, to bring us truth. And so it goes on and it says, and provide for those who grieve in Zion. Zion is representative of the church or the spiritual kingdom. So for those of us who are believers and we grieve, he'll provide for us, he says, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, that even when we have sorrow, that he would bring us joy, beauty for ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. And then here's where I really felt like God spoke to me about this 21 days for us. They will be called oaks of righteousness. I want you to notice that terminology, oaks of righteousness. Oak trees are big, solid, amazing trees. And, and that's, he, he, he wants, I want you to be an oak of righteousness. I want you to be that solid in your life. A planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. In other words, one of our jobs, if you want to talk purpose, is to bring him glory in the way that we live, in the way that we are oaks of righteousness and how we're solid and steady in our lives. It goes on and it says, they will, if they, as oaks of righteousness for my glory, here's what they're going to do. Now, remember, he's talking about us. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. And they will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. Can I say this to you? That's your calling. For, for so many of you that go, you know, Pastor Mike, I listen and, and I hear y'all talk a lot about purpose. I don't really know what my purpose is. I just told you what it was. I just told you what it was, that your purpose is to bring him glory, to be this solid, steady oak that brings him glory and then is on a restoration mission, right? And, and, and we are currently doing several things to fulfill this calling as a church, as a corporate body. So, so the school has, has given us a place to meet, but not just a place to meet. It's a place for us to fulfill the, the, this calling to bring restoration. What do I mean? Well, we started off with, we added the carpet in, in the auditorium. If you've never been in the auditorium with us, when we first came in, has some old stank nasty carpet up in there. And, um, and it had been there for years. I mean, I know people older than me that went to school there that were like, yeah, I think that carpet was there when I was in high school. And so we ripped the carpet out. We put all brand new carpet in. And then they were all excited. And, and then we brought in this whole lighting system and this huge movie screen. It's 32 foot across movie screen. Uh, it was like 1,200 pounds. You should have seen us trying to bring that thing in the auditorium. But, but, but that and, and a laser projector that the school gets to use now when they have assemblies or they have people, other people come, it's a great thing. What are we doing? We're restoring things, 
right? Like that's part of what we're supposed to do. And then we, 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 we partnered to bring in The Rock. And The Rock is a program of benevolence that happens in the school where students can come and get school supplies, clothes, uh, hygiene products, sometimes just come in to talk to somebody. So it's a ministry right in the middle of the school. What are we doing? We're bringing restoration. We've sponsored teams, right? Because we all know the kids that play on teams do much better of staying out of trouble, making healthy decisions, learning how to deal with other people as you're on a team. Uh, other projects, why? Why are we doing this? Because we're on a restoration mission. Did, did, you, did you just hear what it said about those who are followers of Jesus? There'll be oaks of righteousness for his glory, for his splendor, bringing restoration, right? And, and, and that's, that's who we are. Well, now we've got more projects that we're doing that I believe is part of that scenario. It's part of that restoration. And, and, and one of the things we're doing is we're going to be working on restoring the bathrooms in the auditorium to make them very nice. So when people come and use that auditorium, they've got nice uh, updated bathrooms. Another thing we're doing right now is updating the sound system, putting a brand new sound system in to the auditorium that that system hasn't been updated in years. Pretty sure that system came over on the Mayflower. So we are, we are putting a new system up and it's letting us do all kinds of things. And there's actually kind of residual fallout from that. As a matter of fact, let me show you a little bit more of the projects of, of what we're doing and what we're able to do this summer in what I've called a summer of expansion. Check this out. Welcome to The Way Building. All right, so here we are in one part of The Way Building that is called the Worship Center. Uh, we're under construction here. You might see some people behind me. You might hear some saws or some different things, or who knows, the lights might go out. Uh, but we are under construction here. And let me just give you a vision. What are we doing here at the Worship Center? We have a vision of developing, there's the saws right there, uh, developing a place where our worship team can not only rehearse, I don't know if you know this right now, but our worship team has been, uh, they have been practicing and rehearsing in the office, in our little bitty tiny office. And I mean, they're crammed in there. So having this space already has been amazing for them. So all the sound equipment that we are getting to take from the auditorium, we're bringing here for this system. So they're gonna have it set up here where they can train sound people. We can have worship nights. They can invite an artist, uh, artists, the musicians from other churches or different people or just have worship nights, jam nights, uh, have writing nights. We would love to have the opportunity that God might speak to our musicians and maybe write some of our own music. So the worship center here is under development and here's what we're gonna you know, be able to do because of the sound system you were using there. We've got some of the sound here, but that's not all. We're also gonna be able to put some of the sound over in the next part of this building, which is the new place where our youth will meet. Let's go check it out. So here we are in another room that is part of the way building, and this will actually be a game room for the youth group. Uh, over in the corner, there's an office. That'll be Eden's office, who's our youth director bathrooms over here. This is going to be the snack bar. So again, here we are under construction and providing this opportunity in this place for our youth group. And the reason that we've had to provide this space is quite honestly, our youth group outgrew our Thrive Teen Center, which we'll talk about in just a moment. But let me show you another part of this building that'll be used by our youth. So here we are in another part of the building, and this actually is going to be an auditorium for our youth group. In the corner here, we're going to build a stage. Uh, there'll be the sound system. Again, more of the system that comes from the high school is going to be able to come and be used here. So the reason we've developed this way center, worship center that you see, uh, and youth, this will be used for youth, but also all of this can be used for multi-purpose. So whether it be small groups, gatherings, other events, things, whether it's our seniors, ABF, anybody else, this space will also be able to be used. Now, again, the reason we've had to develop this space for our youth is because they outgrew the Thrive Center. Let's go over to the Thrive Center, talk about what expansion's happening there this summer. Let's go check it out.
So every afternoon, from two to seven, this center is open for teenagers for free. All the activities are free. We have volunteers that come, spend time with them, love on them. But I want you to know there is a biblical mentoring program that we have that we walk them through. We've had five kids be saved through the program because once you get to lesson three, you have an opportunity to start a relationship with Jesus. And two of those kids actually went to summer camp this summer and are getting baptized. Amen. So we see the fruit from what go is going on here. As a matter of fact, one of the kids uh, that came here when he first came, his social skills were really, really challenged. Uh, really had a hard time having a conversation with him. I wondered, was he special needs? Uh, what, you know, I, I really wrestled with, how do I deal with this kid? And what we finally came to realize is he just was so unsocialized uh, from being at home and being isolated. And I think having issues of being picked on at school and those kind of things. What we've seen though, is over this last several months is this kid has blossomed. Not only has he gone through our program, accepted Jesus, and he's one of the ones that just got baptized. But the reality is, is he is socially become so more, so much better with his social skills and his ability just to have conversation. I was talking to him the other night and thinking, wow, God, you have done a work and you have changed this, this boy's life has changed because of this center. How amazing is that? We have several stories just like that one. Another one of our young men, um, actually, uh, he got jumped in the neighborhood here. And uh, when he went home, there wasn't a whole lot of support there necessarily. And so he came here and he was loved on and kind of talked through what he had been through and kind of the trauma of that scenario. And, um, and, and, and it was amazing to see our team be able to love on and bring him in. That same child is, has become an active part now, even of the church and what's going on here. But I didn't just bring you here to tell you stories of the life changes happening. I brought you here because we've been talking about things that are expanding, right? Let me tell you what's expanding here. In the same week that this kid got jumped and that whole issue happened, that same exact week, there was a couple that came to church. It was their third week at Church of the Lakes and they had found the church and they said, Pastor Mike, we've got to have lunch. So we went and we had lunch. They tell me their story. They're both black belts and their kids are black belt. Their son was a national champion, is now a coach for the U.S. national team in kickboxing, has a, a, a big school up in Minnesota. And they said, we really felt like God put it on our heart there at the teen center. We would like to teach martial arts and self-defense in the exact same week that this happened. Matter of fact, when we told this kid that this was now a new opportunity, he, his words were, I won't be afraid to walk down the street anymore by myself. Now you want to talk about changing lives. So the expansion that we have going on here is not only are we going to have this building and this facility, we're adding another building. Let's go outside. So here we are in the, let's say, backyard of the Thrive Center, right? And our kids come out here. There's behind the camera, there's a basketball goal. They come out here and this is nine square, probably the most favorite game to be played here at Thrive. And so this is a place where they come out and gather, play games, all kind of stuff. The field you see behind you is also part of the property. Now, I want you to remember this property was just given to us by a couple. And I said earlier in this video that, that God would confirm your dreams. Man, is there any more confirmation? That, that somebody that we do not know, does not come to our church, just says, wow, what you're doing for the community here, have it. So with that, we're expanding here. So right out there in the grass, right over here, we just met this morning with a modular company. We are putting a 24 by 36 modular building. It'll be all wide open, one big room with a bathroom in the corner. So we can house not only the martial arts program that we're hoping will start the 1st of September. Again, this couple's coming. They said, we'll pay for everything. We'll buy t-shirts for the kids. We'll do the belts. And then Pastor Mike, here's the belt levels. You come up with a spiritual component that they have to complete to get each one of their belts. So. Coming in September, Thrive Martial Arts. How amazing is that? And Miss Dawn Anderson, Pastor Doug's wife, she's certified in fitness, especially for our 55 plus community. She'll be doing fitness classes and, and this will give us just another space, just like over at the Way Building. This gives us another space for leadership meetings, for small group gatherings, or men's groups, women's groups, whatever else. So you can't, may not be able to picture it right now, but right out in there, uh, very soon, we hope to be adding a modular building. Now here at the Thrive Center, we are two blocks from the high school, and we are two blocks from Oak Park Middle School. What we've come to figure out is the majority of our kids 
come from Oak Park Middle School. Guess what? Part of the summer expansion, Oak Park Middle School. Let me show you what I mean. Let's go check it out. So like I said, so many of our kids come from Oak Park Middle School to come down to the Thrive Center. Well, here we are at Oak Park, and we're out in a portable building that has been designated to be a new rock here at Oak Park Middle School. So just like we talked about earlier in the video, we looked at the one at Leesburg High School. Here we are in what is under construction, as you can see, but will soon be a rock to start this new school year. We are so uh, grateful to God that he has sent Principal Langley who is a strong believer and an amazing, amazing woman who is now the principal. She has opened us with open arms. And so uh, church, as another part of our summer expansion, here we are, Oak Park Middle School, brand new rock that'll be open starting in August when school starts. Isn't that amazing? I mean, isn't God good? Like, is your head spinning? <laughs> like, so many things that, that God has opened doors. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that we just kind of listened. We just kind of looked around at where God placed us and said, what are you doing, God? What, what is a restoration mission? What, what would you like to see? What is the heart of God yearning to restore or fix or bring health to? And, and, and so we are just called to play our part. Now, for those of you that would say, okay, I get it, the big picture, because you've given me the big picture, but here's the question, what is your particular part? Now that's where it gets a little bit dicey, right? That, that's what I want to talk about today, because I think the number one most asked question in the church is, how do I hear God's voice? How do I know what my part, because Pastor Mark, I hear the whole restoration, but what's my part in that, right? I want to hear him, but I, I really cannot differentiate between God's voice, my voice, the devil's voice, or the egg rolls I ate last night. You know, I mean, whatever that is, it, it, let me say it to you this way. If you knew that every time you prayed that you would hear God's voice, do you think you'd pray more? Right? Maybe, maybe many of us are struggling with prayer because it only consists of talking to God with memorized words and redundant request lists. Think that through a little bit. I think more people would spend time praying if there was a consistent dialogue with God where you receive comfort or instructions or wisdom about your day. The cool thing is that, and catch this, listen to me, we have a speaking God. The notion that God has stopped speaking is simply not true. The third verse of the Bible says, and God said, and the Bible ends with him speaking to seven different churches. We serve a speaking God, but most people are having a really hard time hearing him. Look at, look at Luke eight and eight. Look at this verse. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. What that seems to say is that there's some speaking going on, right? And the issue, listen to me, it is not lack of information. The struggle is with hearing it. Let me say it this way. God does not have a speaking problem, right? Some people might say, well, God just doesn't speak to me. No, God is speaking. The problem is not with the speaking. It is with the hearing. God doesn't have a speaking problem. We have a hearing problem. Jesus said, if you could just tune in, if you could just cut through all the noise in your life, God is speaking to you a whole lot more than you actually realize. It's not a speaking problem. It's a hearing problem. So let's look at the story that precedes this verse. Because that was verse 8. I want to jump back up to verse 5. And let's look at what it says here. It says this. Jesus tells a story. It's a parable uh, to try to help understand the, this, this idea. It says, a farmer went out to sow his seed. And as he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path and were trampled on. And the birds ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground. And when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil. This is, that's what we would like to happen. And it came up and yielded a crop a hundred times more than it was sown. When he said this, he called out, 
He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Again, it's not that God's not speaking. It's just landing in a place that's not ready to receive it. Right? All, all those places that it landed, but it didn't take or it didn't stay. The issue was in that. And Jesus then goes on. Not very often does he do this. But in this particular story, he actually explains the story to us. Sometimes we read some of historians and we're, we're kind of left guessing a little bit and trying to figure out where he's going. But this, look at Luke 8 and 11. It says, this is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God or the voice of God. Some people have grown up in certain denominations that would say, well, only if the Bible says it, only if it's in the Bible. Eh, that's partially true. But guess what they didn't have when they was telling this story? They didn't have a Bible. So the reality being that God also speaks through the Holy Spirit, right? It happens that way. Again, God is speaking. The issue is on the receiving end. So Jesus goes on to explain that there are four different scenarios, scenarios, uh, one of these uh, is, is probably you. One of these scenarios is probably us. It, it, w- let me encourage you right now to decide to open up your heart to the Holy Spirit for the next few minutes as we go through each of these and ask him to help you to be honest with yourself about which one of these is actually you. Which one of these, because it's a heart issue, which one of these hearts is actually you? Let's look at it. Luke 8 and 12. Those along the path are the ones who hear, and when the devil comes, it said birds before, but now it actually explains, when the devil comes and takes away the word from the heart so that they may not believe and be saved. Listen to me, every time God speaks to you, the devil tries to throw something in the mix too. Why? Because he wants to confuse the situation and pollute the truth with lies. That's what he does. He's a liar, right? Jesus is trying to get truth to us The devil is trying to pollute the truth and twist the truth. So one option of this is the polluted heart, the polluted heart that God is trying to speak, but we've got junk in our heart. Now, listen, don't, don't let that make you defensive because this happens to me too, right? This, this is all of us. I'm not pointing a finger at you. Um, I struggle with this as well, for sure. The devil is trying to consistently put things in our heart so that no matter what God says, his truth is taken over by the pollution, right? Pollution in our heart now, it comes in two different forms. One is based on things that we've, choices we've made, right? Choices that we make. We all have sin in our lives, but some of us have unrepentant sin. We have sin that we're not asking God to forgive us for or that we're not walking away from. And we're not seeking any way for it to be helped. We all have sin. You just haven't given that particular sin. You haven't given it to God. So you're walking around and your heart is polluted with shame, regret. And those things, that pollution of that being a part of your life drowns out the voice of God in your life, which allows the devil to just steal it away because of the pollution that he puts in you. The other one is choices other people make. Come on, y'all. People, uh, people are people, right? Right. And and people do things. And every time we try to draw close to God, the devil will stir up any relationship he can. If you're married, you know, if you're, you've got this great experience, you go off to a retreat, you know, it's a men's retreat and you come home and man, your wife's on a rampage. What the heck is going on? Listen to me. That's the devil trying to stir any relationship. He's going to stir relationships at at work, right? Um, And especially those that are close to you. I believe, catch this, that most issues you have with people are really not about you and that person. It's the devil trying to get between you and God. Because if he can pollute your heart with, man, that person and that jerk and this and that, blah, blah, blah. Guess what? You can't hear God in that state. Why? Because a polluted heart cannot hear God. As a matter of fact, Jesus teaches the the disciples how to pray in the Lord's Prayer. And right after that, he gives a commentary that he says, now listen, remember that whole thing about forgive and all that kind of stuff? Listen, go resolve the issue because you and I are going to have a hard time talking when you're wounded and replaying it over and over and over again. How many, how many of you have ever experienced somebody who is so upset, so mad or whatever, and you're trying to talk to them and you just can't seem to get through to them? 
And the reason being is because they're playing it over and over and over. And because they're doing that, they really aren't focusing on your words. They really aren't hearing what you're saying to us. When we have offense and anger and hatred and, and regret and shame and all these things, you can't hear God. It may be that, I would say it to you this way, it may be that you can't hear God because your heart won't stop talking about what it's polluted with. See, when I stop just now, and I give a little moment of silence, you can hear. But if I just talk away and I keep talking and I keep talking and I keep talking, and that's what a polluted heart sounds like. A polluted heart is just, I can't believe this, and I, this person, that offense, and I, and I just can't get over this. And, and, and that, you, listen, James 1 and 21, get rid of all filth and evil in your lives and humbly accept the message of God he planted in your hearts, for it is strong enough to save your soul. Some of us are having a hard time hearing God because we have sin in our lives, polluting us, or we have unforgiveness polluting us. Can I encourage you today to deal with it? Can I encourage you with the best word in the Bible with the worst reputation? There's a word in the Bible that people, when they hear it, we've, we've twisted it. And it's the word repent. And it's mostly because we just see it on a sign on the side of the road where it's some like, repent or you're going to hell, you know, kind of a thing. And so we think of it in this negative way and, 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 and nothing could be further than the truth. Repent means I just turn away from, I change my behavior. And today... Man, if you would repent and walk away, you might be able to hear God in a way that you've never been able to hear him before because my, my heart is so polluted. Ask someone to help you um, to remove that sin from your heart or choose forgiveness and have the awkward conversation necessary to address your hurts. Listen to me, you will feel so much lighter, right? And you'll be able to hear God's voice. And that's really where we want to get. What an amazing invitation. In one moment, God can give you forgiveness, and you can choose forgiveness, and you can bring an unpolluted heart to God and hear him speak more clearly. In other words, I'll say it to you this way. You can never begin a new life until you turn from the old. All right? We're, we're never going to be able to hear him. All right. Here, here's the second type of, of soil condition. Luke 8 and 13 says this. The rocky soil represents those who hear the message with joy, but like young plants in such soil, their roots, catch this, don't go very deep. We should focus on that. They don't go very deep. They believe for a while, but they wilt when the hot wind of testing blows. That's because something else is competing with it. Have you ever gone to church and thought, man, that was a great message, oh my gosh. Like you're, like you're, you're, you're about to pull out of the parking lot of the church, and the pastor just preached on like compassion, and, you know, loving people. And, and somebody in the church parking lot cuts you off. And just like that, you're about to honk your horn before you realize I'm in the church parking lot and I got a sticker on the back of my car that says, I mean, how quickly, come on, anybody, is it just me? Am I just that twisted? Or do you know what I mean? That you could go from holy to hellion in like 1.3 seconds, right? The, the, and, and what is that? Well, that's, that's that reality of that we have, and I'm going to call it this, a distracted heart, a distracted heart that the devil would love to just go, Hey, look over here, right? The devil would love to create your heart into an ADD, right? Or ADHD scenario squirrel, right? And, and distractions. And sometimes distractions can be good things, right? It just takes your attention. It's, it's like trying to have a conversation in a mall. You know what I mean? Standing around with a group of friends, there's people everywhere. And I don't know if you're like me, I'm like looking and seeing different crazy people and whoa, what is that person wearing? That What are they doing? You know, kind of like, it's, it's just distractions. I, I am very easily distracted. Now let me, let me be real transparent for a minute. I think probably my biggest distraction sits right here next to my computer. I think this is my biggest distraction because those little red dots, anybody, you know those little red dots? There's little notifications. Like there's this compulsion inside of me. Like I got to clear the red dots. And, and I finally got to the point where in a lot of my things, I had to say, I don't want any more notifications. I don't want red dots. I only want to go to it when I want to go to it and check it. Otherwise, I'm constantly trying to, to clear red dots. Do you know that kids 8 to 18 on average spend seven and a half hours a day on their smartphone? Seven and a half hours a day. That's 53 hours a week, right? 
confession is good for the soul, bad for the reputation. Can I be honest? As I'm prepping sermons, I'm tempted to pick this thing up and start checking the next thing, you know, 30 minutes later, I've been, you know, scrolling. Come on, anybody else? Like it's, it's that distraction. I have to fight that urge uh, to do that. And, 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 and I'm just going to look for a second and then it's an hour later. Anybody else? Listen to me. All hell is trying to keep us from God. And they will use whatever good or bad thing to distract us. Matter of fact, there's a story of two sisters. Jesus goes to visit these two sisters. Jesus is saying the same thing, but the two of them have a very different experience. Let me show you Luke 10 and 39. And she had a sister named Mary who was seated herself at the Lord's feet and was listening to his teaching. But Martha, overoccupied and too busy, was distracted with much serving. In, other, in, in order to hear God's voice, you're going to have to turn down the world's volume somewhat in your life. That's why we're doing 21 days of prayer and fasting. That's the goal. For the next 21 days, how do I turn down the volume of this world and turn up the volume of God's voice? That's why we fast, right? That I might get away from things of this world and focus more on God, what is God saying and what is he doing and what is my part, right? So we can have a polluted heart. We can have a distracted heart. And then there's a third possibility that some of us might be struggling with. Look at at, uh, Luke 8 and 14. The seed that fell amongst the weeds, and I want you to focus on weeds, stand for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, riches, pleasures, and they don't, there's the word, mature. If you drive by a house and you see a bunch of weeds, I think that the word that comes to mind is neglect, right? There's not a, there's not somebody who's taking care of that scenario. And that's what happens if we are not developing our heart and developing our character. Well, then the third is that we can have an immature heart, right? This, this neglected heart will say, Uh, I'm saved. I'm good. Me and God are good. I'm not doing anything more. But God would say this to you. No, this is called a relationship. If I had looked at my wife on our wedding day and said, I said I do, leave me alone. Right? That, that's not going to fly. Why? Because this is a relationship. It's the same with God. He wants a relationship with you. He wants something deeper with you. And, 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 and he wants to have conversation with you on a different level. My, my wife and I, Jen, when we have conversations, we have adult mature conversations, right? We discuss finances or goals. We talk about kids and discipline and what we're trying to accomplish that week. We talk about doctrine, beliefs, ideas for the church. We have all kinds of mature conversations. But what happens when one of our new moms brings me their kid at the church? I'm like, hey, what are you doing? Hey, what, how are you? what if I went home this afternoon and said, Jen, what are you doing? She'd be like, what is wrong with you? Have you lost your absolute mind? Why? Because listen to me, the conversation changes depending on the maturity of the receiving end. In other words, when one of the kids from our children's ministry stops me in the hallway, the conversation changes. Uh, When I'm in an elder meeting with the elders of our church, the conversation changes. The difference is the maturity on the receiving end of the conversation. Are you hearing me? We all need to develop beyond just, I'm saved. If you are dissatisfied with the level of conversation you're having with God, maybe it's on us to grow up a little bit. Maybe it's, we have an immature, an undeveloped, immature heart. Maybe it's time for us to go a little deeper when it comes to our spiritual life. God has some deep sophisticated things to tell you, wisdom to give you, and and how he sees your life being full of great things. But our immature, untrained heart is not ready to have those conversations. So something like this, I don't think I want to do this 21 days of prayer and fasting. Well, listen to me, it's, it's not about what we want or what we desire. It's about pushing into relationship with him, right? Or I hear Pastor Mike always talking about this thing, life steps, these classes, but I don't want to stay after church and I don't want to do that kind of thing. But, but I just, I'm just concerned about beating the Methodist to Oakwood, you know, for barbecue. But, but listen to me, but God wants a relationship. We don't, we don't do those things just to have things to do. We're trying to grow and develop you. 
um, small groups are coming in September, and many of us will go, oh my gosh, people, <laughs> right? Or I got to go to somebody's house. That's another night a week. We're overscheduled as it is. Listen to me. God wants to give you some sophisticated adult conversations. He wants to give you some great wisdom, but to do that, you have to have a mature heart. It's got to be grown up. It's got to be dealt with. Look at Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Since we're surrounded by so many examples of faith, we must get rid of everything that slows us down. Could it be that my lack of, de of developing my heart, of developing the spiritual part of who I am, that I've stayed immature in my spiritual development, that's why I don't hear God the way other people hear God, right? We don't do these things, small groups and, and, and lifestyle. We don't do these things to be, feel better about ourselves. We do these things because we love Jesus and, and we want people to mature and to grow. Why? So that you can hear God. Why? So that you can fulfill your purpose in the big story of the calling that we've been talking about here. All right, let me go back to that passage. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. I, I want you to notice something about this whole thing. You know, we, 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 we. And as a matter of fact, it says us, 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 us. Listen to me, you cannot mature by yourself. You must get in an environment where re people really know who you are and can safely and lovingly call you to something more. Small groups start in September, get plugged in. It's something you need. For some of you that have been church for a while, it's time for you to host a group, to lead a group. You're like, ooh, I don't know about all that. But listen to me, nothing will grow you up like being responsible for other people. <laughs> As a matter of fact, if you and your wife uh, have a hard time or you and your husband have a hard time arguing during the week, um, host a small group. Because there is nothing like knowing that in 15 minutes, the doorbell's gonna ring. And we're gonna have to have this solved so we can focus on what we're doing with these people. You wanna talk about mature you and grow you up and make you do? Some of you need to do that. Listen to me here, I'll say it to you this way. Maturity comes, when we stop making excuses and we start making changes. And so if it's, if it's God's voice you want to hear, you've got to make sure that you're not polluted by sin, polluted by the, the, the voices and the things that the devil's trying to throw into you, distracted by all the things of the world and things that you're chasing and trying to get, or immature because we've not taken time to develop our spiritual walk. And so I want, I, I want to push you. I want you to take this fall season and jump in. Life steps, small groups, uh, get involved with our dream team. Um, be, because if you want to know your purpose, you're going to have to push beyond these soil conditions of your heart to the next one, Luke 8 and 15. But the seed on good soil stands for those with noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, produce a crop. This is what I would call the prepared heart, the prepared heart. How do you prepare your heart? Well, that's what we're doing for 21 days of prayer and fasting. First, repent, that I would repent from those things that are polluting my life, that sin, or, or those things, the distraction, I, I need to turn away from. That's why we're fasting. We're taking things like, maybe it's social media, maybe it's this thing, that you need to fast for 21 days, get away from it, because it's a distraction from, from hearing God's voice and then fulfilling your part of the vision. And, and, and what will that do? That'll make you refocus. If you'll repent and walk away and take these 21 days, it'll refocus you and then it will revive purpose in you. It'll revive meaning and what God has called you to do. So last verse, 2 Corinthians 7 and 1. Let's make a clean break with everything that defiles or distracts us, both within and without. Let's say make our entire lives fit and holy temples for the worship of God. Some of us this morning are in the doldrums. Do you know what the doldrums are? That's a that's a area down by the equator where because of the movement of the spinning of the earth, the this moves this way and this moves this way, but in that area there is no wind. So back before there were motorized boats when they when they counted on sails and the wind. You, you don't want to get caught in the doldrums because if you got in the cold, caught in the doldrums, you were dead in the water. In other words, you weren't moving. You were only going to move wherever the tide. And some of us don't have any wind in our sail. You, you, do you need a little wind in your sail? 
Um, well, we need to deal with the pollution in our hearts, the distractions of this world, the lack of spiritual maturity. In other words, the last point I'll give you is this. God's voice is clearest in a prepared environment. That's what we're going to do for the next 21 days. I, I want a prepared environment in my heart that I might hear God's voice, right? That I, that I might understand what is my part in this vision and what he has called us to do. So let me, let me pray for you in that process. God, thank you for the opportunity we have for the next 21 days to push in. And God, would you help us? Those who have, of us who have polluted hearts, whether that be sin, choices we've made, choices that other people have made, messages that we continue to hear that were spoken over us and words that said that we would never matter. Father, we repent, we walk away from, would you clean out the pollution in our heart that we might hear your voice. For those of us who are distracted by the things of this world, God, would you please help us to stay focused on what it is that you would have us do. And, and then God, those that, 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 that continue to, to struggle in the area of immaturity because we don't, we don't develop spiritually. We don't develop that part of us. Would you help us to know how to begin to develop? Uh, Cause we want to hear your voice. So God, thank you for this teaching today. Now help us not just to hear a teaching, but to put something into play, to, to, to get a plan uh, to start to make a change, to push in towards you as we push in during 21 days of prayer. So thank you, God, for today. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget, you can grab your guide for 21 days of prayer. And I hope to see you tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. on Facebook Live. Have a great week.